So hello everyone. Uh, so we wait few few more people. In the meantime, I like uh, so who am I? And to this a bit uh, about me and say that I'm honored to be uh, hosting this um, co-hosting um, this talk because it's a topic which is uh, quite interesting and um, challenging at the same time. So uh, hopefully you'll find it useful. So who am I? Um, let, let's start like uh, saying that uh, uh, I am a statistician uh, and I've joined the R4 Data Science community just like, like three years ago. Uh, since the, the pandemic, uh, you know, um, interrupted all our uh, lives. And so I found myself uh, looking to the internet to like, um, uh, um, use the data uh, from COVID-19 and then, you know, found more information, more courses, more things and everything. And now I'm an uh, enthusiast. So I'm, I, I really, I think like I found my uh, environment. So it, it's all quite interesting and there is always something new to learn. Okay, so having said that, uh, what do we do, Sam? Should we wait or shall we start? We've got 21 people on, so I think it's a good time for us to get started. Right. Okay, I start sharing my uh, presentation. Okay. Can you all see it? Uh, see it? The, yes, we can see that. All right. Um, so, how to start? I've uh, made the research to the internet. I've taken part to some competition and everything. And the spa spatial modeling is a uh, quite uh, wide uh, topic. So. It might be difficult sometimes to find the, 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 the right way to, um, to use all the tools that you can, that you have at disposition. So, um, I, I already introduced uh, a bit about myself. You'll find all the um, information and my presentation with the other slides in the GitHub repo um, at the end of this, uh, this talk. So what do we do uh, within this, uh, uh, this, this is a sort of workshop, okay? Our learning objectives are making a map, understand what is sp spatial data complexity, and finally make a spatial model visualization. So, um, I've put some information on the meetup uh, page for, for this talk about what packages you needed to, if you want to follow along. So if you, if you like, uh, you might need these packages um, that you can install it from CRAN and then uh, like a bit of like self-fishing things. Uh, I've, just put the, the data of the Oregon frogs in a package. So we are using this package for, for making the analysis. So if you like, you can uh, install the, um, the package from, uh, from source. Okay, um, this will be a nice breaking activity to spatial modeling with R. And we will be looking at uh, uh, the Oregon spotted frog habitat study. And then um, we try to get inside uh, the um, mapping health data uh, for preventing the spread of diseases, particular diseases in 
so we start having a look at this uh, uh, type of cancer spread in Scotland. Um, there's something in the chat. Um, maybe, I don't know, uh, is there anything I need to... Uh, no. Okay. Uh, are you all okay with starting? Because we are going to uh, have a little introduction uh, and I've like reassumed all the information I found uh, interesting uh, to give an idea of what's happening when you use spatial data with R and uh, when you want to model data um, and make a spatial model. Um, so after this in little introduction, uh, we do a bit of coding. So hope you, you are comfortable with uh, open up your R Studio, having these packages installed while while even even while I'm I'm doing this uh, little introduction. Are you all okay with that? Maybe some. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I think let's give everybody a couple of minutes to get uh, the packages in, installed yeah. and also to visit um, the GitHub repo and get that downloaded as well. Yeah. The GitHub repo is a bit like um, uh, we do live, so you can code with me. And uh, uh, if, if you like, otherwise you can have a look at the repo, but that it will be uh, finally ready at the end of this talk. So, uh, okay, I'm, I'm sure all of you know about Tidyverse, which is a meta package that has uh, different packages for uh, data wrangling, uh, included poor, so that's uh, already provided inside the Tidyverse. Then there is a ggtheme, and this, this one is more like very uh, handling uh, handful um, package because you can like make uh, a ggplot looking better somehow you can that there's uh, pre-built features that you can use map tools it's for extracting data making uh, like maps and in general ggmap it, it's for making in this case used for uh, a background map making a background map uh, with nice features and uh, we don't, it provides even uh, uh, the possibility for you to get inside the Google API, uh, but you, you need to like have the, the Google API um, access. Uh, but then when you got that, you can really retrieve a high quality map, uh, very precise. And then there is SP depth for uh, making calculation of the, the weights, um, the simple features package, uh, which is you know the, the, the foundation of everything for making um, uh, manipulation of spatial da data. And then there is now these two packages, which is SPOCC. Uh, uh, and this one is very interesting because you can, uh, with this package, retrieve data from uh, GBIF, uh, which is the portal for, for uh, um, retrieving data from the, uh, for, for, for the, um, for example, bioclimate data. Um, and um, uh, you can uh, um, retrieve information about uh, uh, like the um, species, uh, if you use like the, uh, the scientific name, you can retrieve species and the, the number, like the frequency they are located in some spe specified locations. Uh, this uh, DI as uh, MO is um, for making a, a bio uh, model. And then finally, special API, uh, and this one is for uh, health uh, data analysis. So I think we 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 are all okay, more or less. So 
we we go um, with starting uh, talking about uh, what is this uh, special data world that we want to uh, get inside and, and see. Um, the, the workshop, uh, sort of a workshop will be uh, before uh, and uh, structured this way. There, there will be an introduction, uh, a bit of hands on, on mapping Rana Preciosa around the US, and then we will be making special assumptions. Then a little breaks, and there will be another session introduction. Uh, try to uh, compare um, uh, certain particular form of, of cancer in Scotland uh, with the model, and then making so um, final conclusions and wraps up. So, what are uh, special data? So special data is most often represented by one of two data models. They can be vectors or raster. So in just statistical models, sample data are interpreted as the result of a random process, okay? So uh, sp spatial modeling is an important instrument and it is uh, used to guide the decision-making dealing with risk management in different areas, such as public health, econometrics, general ecology, as well as public transportation and real estate. So an important distinction has to be made between spatial model and spatial data model. So that it seems like the same thing. They, can, they, they like making confusion. What, what is, is they, are they the same? Are they different? They, they slightly different. So while data models are important connection between the individual perception and certain events. And um, so uh, how those events are being represented and processed with an algorithm. You can imagine that uh, data models are like the connection trust uh, between spatial primitives and relationships, while spatial models are different. So they are defined as uh, process models. So they are dynamic spatial proce process uh, that are phenomena that change in time, such as the virus spread, flood form, uh, formation, land cover change. Um, you can think about like the uh, distances between two points and uh, uh, you have these two main uh, um, uh, um, division, okay? Uh, the, there is a, this is like an heuristic explanation or, of how point distances are calculated. And um, you can consider whether the Eulerian or the Lagrangian uh, views. So these two, um, like in, in the spatial literature, literature you, the, these two uh, views are uh, those ones that groups uh, the investigations uh, uh, largely. So you use the Eulerian distance for calculating some type of models and the Lagrangian view uh, um, um, models for making um, other type of models. So Eulerian models con concern about the change of properties such as uh, in, in the earth, okay, such as temperature, land cover at fixed locations, while Lagrangian models track uh, track the movements of object in space. And this is the case of the virus spread, for example, or species uh, movement and habitat use, those things like that. So as said, the one more important distinction is that uh, the GIS or the geographic information system are composed of raster and vector data. So in vector data model, uh, models, Space is not quantized into discrete grid cells uh, like the Rustle model, but use points associated with X and Y coordinated um, pairs to represent the vertex of a spatial feature. They can be points, they can be lines, they can be polygons. 
so that instead of rasters, rasters are pixels, those ones that you can find in the images, for example, as well. So you have a raster image, a vector, and the real world. So this layer, um, you, you use different layers when you have data to add in your um, background map to uh, see the differences um, in changing numbers, in changing uh, environment. So uh, one impo important thing to mention is that when we do modeling, uh, we look for correlation uh, between uh, among predictors while uh, when you do a spatial model, you allow for autocorrelation because two points uh, on the earth that are close to each other in terms of uh, uh, latitude and longitude are co more correlated the, uh, with those closer points than with the others that are far, farther away. So, there, is, there are, um, we have the models that we use for, for making models, but they are slightly adjusted, let's say, because we are now allow for correlation. Okay, in some senses, this is, this reassume the, the what is the, the, the main difference. So spatial data is considered typically autocorrelated or clustered. And um, uh, so data may be, um, as I said, uh, I've already said all these things. So the analysis of the residual, when, when you do modeling, basically what do you, the, the things that you do, uh, you predict, uh, so you, you make a function that uh, uh, considers uh, the, the elements that you, uh, so the predictors, uh, and you estimate uh, some coefficients that together with the, the predictor will uh, be able to replicate your data. So um, then to verify if you have made a good job, you do like a difference between uh, your observations and your predictions. This difference is the residual. So you, uh, when you do modeling, you aim to have uh, uh, the smaller uh, residual uh, um, as possible. Um, here we're talking about the residual sp spatial co autocorrelation. So it's very important that when you do spatial modeling, uh, think of, uh, assume that uh, data may be correlated. So you want to reduce this uh, at most, uh, just what is needed. And the prediction continues to uh, spatial product, um, in, in, in spatial modeling in, in general, there is a, uh, a terms which is grinking. And this it means it's a, it's a, um, um, means uh, geo interpolation and it's named after Danny Cringe um, from South Africa. And um, it is also known as a Wayner Kolmogor prediction distance ever uh, weighted average. So this is the uh, base model for spatial modeling, basically. And it's called, when you do this type of uh, spatial modeling, you do grinking. Okay, um, so we will talk a bit more about that, but uh, the, it's a world. So like half an hour, an hour, that it would be not enough. So we need to like reassume the things a bit and see what's happened. So a spatial model is uh, a representation of various social natural processes like land cover change, spread of invasive species, population migration, we know about that. So to be more explicit, spatial modeling combines spatial analysis and prediction. So it's not just spatial analysis, but we do, th there is a prediction. So you start from the raw data, then do a, a little of 
a bit of pre-processing and then you um, tracking your data, do your analysis, and then with all the information that you find, you, you attempt predicting uh, those changes, which is quite a challenging thing. Um, so grinking is even the term that defines the best model performance. So when you do grinking, you, uh, you do validation of your model as well. So you want to achieve the best model performance and so the best prediction. This term is considered as synonymous of prediction in classical data forecasting model techniques. So the integration of GIS and multi-criteria decision-making analysis is a key in providing help to decision makers in different areas. So GIS-based uh, MCDA use linear weighted equation to combine spatial variables. And this is the equation. Basically, you have this function fx, which is our usual model made of beta and x. Uh, so the uh, your, your uh, coefficients and uh, your predictors. Now you have a weight that you need to consider because of this autocorrelation. So uh, this W defines the spatial neighbor structure over the entire study region, and its elements can be viewed as weight. So under this structure, the total number of neighbors in each area is adjusted to obtain a standardized matrix. So you, but you don't do this. Uh, th there are many functions that are already made. So you choose the, the one that you like, you, you check the result and you keep going with that. So these are number, there are a number of spatial models that can be used for spatial and spatial temporal modeling, prediction and simulation. One is crinking, okay? It's, it's a type of uh, model. There are other, other methods. What, another one is geographically weighted regression or inverse distance weighting. Okay, so uh, do you have any questions before I jump into R? Hey, Federica, yeah, we do have a question. Um, somebody has asked in the Slido, um, well, what are the sizes of data sets that you have done spatial data analysis with? Like how large is the data that you can work with in R for spatial analysis? Uh, they, they can be quite, quite, quite large. You have uh, uh, several methods for saving uh, the result of your um, uh, data retrieval. Uh, with like uh, um, saving the image uh, on, as an R data uh, or other way. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I can, I can tell you a number. So say the maximum, uh, because I'm not sure about that. But uh, in the, this, uh, uh, what we are going to do now is all manageable and you can do it easily. Uh, the, the, um, le, le, uh, the, the, are there any other questions? No, that was the only question we've had so okay. far. Le, let's, um, go to R. Okay. Can, can you see my R? Is there, um, a file in the GitHub repository that corresponds to this code? Yeah. Can you tell me the location of that and I can post it in the chat? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, now I'm, I'm putting in the chat. Ah, thank you. Okay, there you go. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that'll be a lot easier for folks to follow along, I think. Okay. So, um, uh, but before I end, I like to see this data set. So this Oregon frog, it's a data set which is very uh, like useful for making uh, analysis of different kinds. And as you can see, we have these two nice uh, uh, columns. 
Uh, and these are uh, the coordinates in meters. Okay, so what we are going to do is to transform this, this uh, coordinate to be able to use ggplot. And um, 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 so plot these points, so the, these frogs in a base ground map. Okay, so before uh, doing that, what we do is uh, um, using the um, library um, SPOCC. Uh, if you are uh, curious to see what is this, uh, this one here uh, is a basically an interface to species occurrences. So you can retrieve data about uh, where some particular species are located in the world. So to do that, use this function, which is OCC. And uh, this is the name, uh, uh, the, the scientific name for Rana Preziosa, for example. And uh, the, the data will be retrieved from GBIF. Do you know what is uh, what GBIF is? Uh, maybe you don't know what, what GBIF is, but it's, it's a very, uh, interesting uh, portal. Then you find all the like information in the in the repo. Uh, so then then we limit um, to a thousand, and we we like to have the the coordinates. If we run this function, it, it might take a bit, but uh, then then it will uh, uh, release a nice uh, um, information. Then we have, uh, um, we, what I suggest you to do is to, in the repo, there is a folder. Um, uh, if you load it in your R, you have all the, um, uh, all the information already, um, already done. And you can find this uh, in the, um in the data okay uh, i'll put this in the chat see if you load uh, this data uh, in uh, in your r environment this r data in your r environment you find all the, the all the, um, the variables so we don't need to wait for uh, for them to be uh, created Okay, even if this one is, is done. Okay, so we now we can see what uh, this uh, uh, do GBIF is. And, um, you know, he found uh, a certain number of occurrences of uh, frogs uh, in the US and Canada. Mm, so what we do is now making a data frame because uh, this GBIF, um, as you can see, if I do dollar, I have a certain number of information. So what I need is um, the GBIF information and it's, it's an R6 object. So I can do again, uh, the dollar sign so I can find meta or data, so I need the data. And then I do transform them as a, as a data frame in a way that uh, I have some like information that I can, that can are readable and I can use. Uh, next step is to um, uh, like this data, uh, if I do uh, like do beef names, uh, you see that there's a, um, it's like 136 predictors, so we don't need them, okay? What we need are the longitude and the latitude. So I've renamed, uh, and they are the first two. You see, you find uh, the names, and you find the first two longitude and latitude. I renamed them to longitude and latitude, so to have... Uh, um, uh, them um, renamed. 
then what we do is with ggplot2, we do map data states to, um, to have the data for mapping the United States. So we do map data and then state. What we found is, you know, the, the X and Y, which are the long and the latitude and the regions for the United States. And then we do restrict the, this information that we just retrieved to the Oregon um, state, to the Oregon country. Uh, county, and then we make um, a uh, start making a ggplot. Okay, so if I type it, may maybe it takes a bit longer. Uh, so um, what we do is basically doing a ggplot of the states and then mapping to long and lat and grouping. Then we add a layer, a first layer, and it is a polygon, okay? If, if we look at that, we already made a map, okay? If we look just at this bit, we already made a map, okay? So uh, then we had another layer with Oregon, so to see that uh, what we are um, interested in. And um, this is Oregon. And then we add the do gbif2. So this one here with the longitude and latitude renamed. Uh, we add the points. OK, so if you have any questions, uh, you can put it on Slido. Uh, if you don't know how to do something, if you don't, uh, are not, basically I used to do the mapping, adding the, the mapping things here when I use different data in a, in a different layer, because sometimes it requires to, to, uh, to specify the mapping. Uh, so this is a map with three layers, the, 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 all the, the United States, the Oregon and the frogs located within the United States and Canada. We don't have the Canada. Uh, okay, so now uh, that we have uh, visualized, we, we, we can start making some, some assumptions, okay? And say, well, what's happened if we, um want to know a bit more about these frogs and in particular we want to look at these frogs in the um, um in, in 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 oregon in a particular environment of oregon uh, if i uh, uh, share this so you can uh, you can see what I'm talking about. So, okay. And uh, see if we, um, these are the data that we have already uh, looked at. Okay. And uh, you can see that uh, the frogs are in a particular uh, lake. Uh, and um, the, there are subside, uptype, uh, the, the, when they are located, uh, the day of the, the years and the frequency, because they are located with a radio telemetry frequency. So um, uh, this frequency is able to locate the frog. And then, and then uh, some of the frog are uh, visualized, other just located, and some of them, they are like uh, captured. So we have some, some information. And uh, this study is from, uh, um, uh, where is it? The, this study is from Oregon, spotted a frog. As you can see, yeah. Uh, it's from this study, from this uh, um, 
Forest and Ecosystem Science Center. Uh, and basically, they, they look at these, um, um, these frogs. So what we want is to uh, see what are they. So basically, um, we transform, we select the two elements. It, uh, in, we have uh, uh, a nice function that we can use. Um, you might need an extra package, but um, with this with this uh, GDAL, our GDAL package, you have uh, um, this function that allows you to see the projections. Okay, so all these projections uh, identify a particular point on the Earth and allows for the Earth to be uh, rounded. So when you uh, transform coordinates, you need to specify the projection. So, uh, so you know which part of the, the world you are looking at. And uh, so we select from the Oregon frog the, these, two coordinate, these two vectors, and those are the coordinates. This UTM, it's basically um, uh, how can I say the um, distance in meters? Okay, this is uh, the distance in meters, the unif unified distance in meters, let's say uh, from the equator, and so the longitude, and from the north uh, side, uh, and so the latitude. So these are in meters, so a quite handling and useful, and I, I usually use for uh, making, um, um, for locating uh, species, because you can calculate the distance uh, and more easily within, with meters than, than with mm, regular coordinates. Um, so what we do is now transforming this into latitude and longitude, and uh, we do this with using the simple Fisher package. And um, this is a, a function that uh, ST, so spatial data as simple features. We use this function and we specify the chords. Uh, where are they in our data frame? So uh, they are the first two columns of this um, that we have just uh, uh, modified. So they are two columns. We have selected just the two columns. So we need to specify the chords, where are they? And then the coordinate reference system. This one here is, you know, the, the point of view are you looking at when you make a map? So we do this, uh, specify that it's a UTM type and the zone. There is in the uh, in the repo a, a little bit more specification about the zone and everything because the the UTM divide the the, the earth in a certain number of zones so you select the zone. Then if we just use this function, what's happened is that we already obtain a geometry. Uh, as you can see, we already modified, but inside we still have the UTM. Uh, information. So we need to use another function, which is as uh, spatial spatial transformation. And now we want to transform it in long and latitude, specifying um, that this one uh, is uh, will be in WGS eighty four, which is uh, um, one of the spe specification that you can find here, like, like uh, uh, if you go. So our po our point of view. Uh, when all the maps are, uh, you know, uh, represented generally, uh, are uh, um, um, it, with a code, okay, which is uh, 4326. And this 4326, uh, where is it? Uh, corresponds to this WGS. Uh, um, Okay, um, 84, okay. So this is uh, nothing else that specifying that we are transforming um, this uh, UTM to coordinates because that, that it, you know, um, 
is the complexity, complexity. Uh, spatial complexity. But now, uh, as you can see, we have the geometry and the latitude and the longitude as we want it. So we transform it. What do we do next is to uh, make a table uh, selecting, um, adding these two uh, geometry, but now we enlist, uh, we mapping the geometry uh, and we enlist uh, the mapping. So in a way to have uh, the um, latitude and longitude outside of the geometry and then um, in, in the table. So all this transformation uh, let us to uh, do something else. So what do we do now is this. So we use a GMAP uh, in the, in the uh, study page, um, there is a box. What is a box? Box is the, the location. So the minimum and the maximum latitude and the minimum and the maximum so the minimum, the maximum longitude and the minimum, the maximum latitude. So we can do this, uh, uh, we have this information. So we build a box and then we use get um, stay map with the box uh, to, to retrieve, uh, as you can see, um, some information. Um, so all the, all the information that to make the lake map. And then we start building the, the ground map. So we use ggmap on crane reservoir. And we just we name it as a crane reservoir. So as you can see, we have the lake now. So then we had the frog location. So we can use ggplot2. We 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 had the geo points, and so we can see where are the, the frogs. Where are they located? Okay, now uh, uh, you can see that there is a range. There, some of them are here, some of them are there. Uh, th this is uh, the, the main, and but they are even at the bottom here on this side. What else we do is to basically have a look at, the, at this data, but now, I need to speed up a bit. Um, but now what we do is to use the information that we got, uh, do a little transformation, like uh, make the, so the data that we have um, starting from a certain point and then adding the day. So in a way that we can transform um, the time information. So like we have a table, yeah. Okay, what we do is that uh, if we, we know that the, um, the Oregon frogs have been, uh, it's, it's a study that started from late September to late November. Uh, and there is a, a column, a vector with the days of the year. Yes. So 268 is the, basically uh, 268 uh, is the, um, a day, the day of the year. So we start from the 1st of January, 2018 and, uh, and add these days. Uh, and then we transform with lubricate and months to, to have uh, a new table this way. So we have the months uh, and we can use this uh, in, our, um, in our plot. This time, what we use is geom simple features. Because um, now we have, a, uh, we, we have a geometry with the coordinates. So we can use geom simple features. Okay, when you use sim geom simple features, you don't need to add uh, nothing else than uh, your data specifying inside the aesthetic that you have a geometry. 
So if I do this with my base map, okay, uh, I've already uh, located, positioned my frogs. But now what I want is to make the three facet with the, uh, with the months in a way that uh, I can see how they change it within uh, September, October, and November. As you, as you can see, um, in September, they are not located in this area, while, and even uh, in October, while in November, they are all spread in the entire area. So you can, you can do these things. Okay, so now uh, what we do is um, starting making um, a um, what we can do is um, make a grid because um, hey Federica. Yeah. Uh, but before you do that, uh, there's a question in the chat. Someone would like to, you to show again, um, yeah. transforming simple features um, and talking about how you determine the projection um, and then how you converted UTM to um, the latitude and longitude. Okay, Let, let's see that again. Uh, okay. So what we can do basically to do the, this thing is this. So we have our Oregon frogs, no? Okay, this is our data set. We select the UDM 83, these two columns, and we make a table. Of, of these two, two columns. Here I've added the frequency uh, you to do something, but it, it, actually we, we don't need it. So we make a table this way in a way that we got uh, like the UTM uh, equator and UTM north. Then what we do is using this function from simple Fisher package. So this function here, what does, is basically converting foreign object as a simple feature object. In our case, uh, uh, we don't have a, a foreign object in, in some senses because they are UTM, but we want to transform it in a geometry. So we need to uh, specify the chords inside this uh, STSF uh, function. So where the cores are located in our data set, and they are the first two vectors. So we do the first one and two. And then we set the um, uh, coordinate reference system. So the projection. This one here, um, how do you set it? You have this function as I've shown you uh, before, this one here, make, EPSG. So, if you know about a bit about spatial data, if you if you even Google it, EPSG, uh, EPSG, you find a website. Uh, you can have a look at here. Uh, you can put the the whole sentence, but what you need is just this. So, what we do is basically uh, uh, there we go. Um, um, advising that we are uh, we have a UTM uh, projected from zone ten, and we want a geometry. So we have a geometry, and then we transform it again to have uh, inside the geometry a latitude. So as you can see, uh, what we did it we had UTM. And now we have longitude and latitude. Is that okay? Can you talk a little bit, Federico, about how you knew which um, 
projection and zone to use. So yeah, the UTM comes from the name of the variable, but how, how did you know which zone it was? Right. Uh, basically, there is a convention. Um, uh, the, the centered zone, uh, usually you see that the maps are centered uh, more or less within the Europe and the United States, no? So th that's a projection. And it is usually uh, a convention to use that. And you can, um, basically it is, um, uh, you, you can set like C, rs equals to 4326 uh, this number corresponds to this uh, wgs84 and as well as zone 10 it's a convention uh, that's why i know uh, i don't know but uh, you, when you search uh, for for things you find that uh, the most used one is this then if you if you want to point your map into like asia or a different um, zone. So you want to look at a, another um, point, pointing and a, a different position, then you need to look at something like other, other points. And, and you can find it here with the function from GDAL, RGDAL. Uh, for example, these are different codes and um, um, for uh, this one is the, the one we are talking about. And um, then you um, uh, have the zone and the zones are, are the same. So it's always then zone 10 for, for this projection. Otherwise you, you might want to choose a different zone. So hope I have answered uh, a bit. There are convention in spatial data that you use uh, but if you want to make different, you can make it different and you have different uh, uh, convention to use. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I think we have another question uh, about going back to the code. So now that you've answered that question, go, can you go back to where you made your facet wrap plot? Somebody is wanting to see that. And I'll post a link to that as well, um, where it is in the repository. He yeah, uh, the facet. Um, is this is this plot here? So basically, uh, the base map is uh, the one that we did it uh, with ggmap, and then which is this, and then I add. Um, the the frog locations, the Oregon frogs on the lake, and then uh, I made a, a, a facet by time. I cut the time in uh, one month. Okay, so I think it's an hour more or less. So we can even have a five minutes break, and then we. Um, like speed up this uh, this part and conclude with the the health uh, modeling. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, yeah. Everybody, we'll be back in in five minutes. So that is uh, seven twelve Eastern time. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm here. If you have any questions, do you uh, you can ask if you like. Okay, I have that as our five minute break over. Federica, you're muted. Okay. 
Sorry about that. Okay. What we do now is building a grid. This is even things uh, which is uh, quite challenging. Okay. So uh, somehow if you uh, want to make a grid, the grid, what, what is it? Because, uh, you know, we have uh, our frogs, you know? Where is the, um, no, maybe this, this one is better. Torre, really. No? Tower, tower. Can you, can you see my R? Uh, yes. uh, there is tower someone that flash. has the, the, the microphone. The Open. Uh, can okay. you? Can... I muted them. <laughs> we can see your R. You should be good to go. Okay. Okay, but because now. Okay. Okay. So these are the um, uh, the the frogs. Okay, that we have located. Mm, okay. And now, okay, if, if you do uh, modeling, uh, you, you do um, uh, sp uh, spatial modeling and everything. So now, now um, uh, what's happened is that uh, you might want to see uh, where the, these frogs can be, okay? So you might want to build a grid, that means, um, like a grid of points that you can then um, map uh, with a distance. So it's a quite complicated things. Uh, somehow we don't do that now, but uh, we can make a grid. Okay. So using the, um, the, the, the simple feature, okay, uh, package. And with this function, uh, so uh, um, make a grid, okay? Uh, and uh, inside the make a grid, we need to use uh, uh, this uh, uh, spatial uh, as a simple feature and then inside the box, okay? Um, then we need to specify that we want the centers and then the cell size, and then if you want it squared or not. So if, you, if we do that, we have a grid, okay? So this is a, uh, a geometry set uh, for some features, and we can even see uh, what is it. If we uh, use geom features uh, with the grid and then geom features with the points. So we basically uh, first build a grid. Uh -oh. Okay. And then on top, we add the points. These are our frogs in the lake. And then we have made a grid all around these points. Then we can, we could use it. We don't use it now, but we could use it. Okay, for doing something. Okay, then finally, um, what uh, uh, I'm going to close this one here and over a new one, save it as a, uh, Script two. 
And what we do now uh, is making a model, okay? To do a model, uh, this is a bio model for, for the frogs. We need these packages, tidyverse, Argeos, Raster, Argidal, and um, Dismo. Uh, you don't uh, worry too much about uh, these things because uh, you know it might take a while. Uh, if you want, you can uh, like load um, the um, R data. Um, Okay, if you want, you can load the R data uh, from, from the repo and you have all the, uh, all the elements. Okay, so one more packages that I use for making map is map tools. Okay, this one is nice. It's going to be like uh, um, uh, in retirement because it's uh, like uh, included in other packages and everything, but uh, you can still use it. So if we do, uh, we plot. Um, anyway. Um, okay, so le let's, uh, let's see later, how do we use it? Okay, and then we use again uh, what we did it before. So we don't do it again because we already got all the information, uh, but uh, we use this uh, uh, for retrieving the, the data. And then we use uh, um, I'll show you what we do. It's basically we use world world um, we plot um, world simple. Okay, as you can see, there is a, this, this is the same, this is the, the border of the United States with the, with the Canada. And then we can add the frogs. Okay, so basically what you, um, what you see if you do that, What you see, if you, if you do that, is uh, um, basically uh, mapping um, Okay, well, anyway, doesn't, um, it, it doesn't, oh, okay, because the points are not, uh, uh, are not showing, um, showing up. Okay, so, um, let, let's say that we did we did that. And um, 
okay. And okay, what we need to do, it's basically load uh, this, uh, um, uh, this data. This it doesn't add my, uh, my points. So I don't know why it doesn't add my points. But anyway, if we use this function, let, let's say that uh, you, you have this, this bit of uh, the United States and now here you have all the points that they should, they are these points here. Okay. So then we use um, the same thing to do the data frame. And now we have a data frame. No, we don't have a data frame. Okay, okay. Let, let's say that uh, now is everything uh, because I've closed the the things. We are all uh, like it's it's like an hour and a half. So I'm I'm just um, uh, showing you what's happened here. Okay, so basically, um, again, we make a polygon. And uh, we do uh, stratify a bit the things, and we obtain, uh, as I shown, uh, the, the United States with a bit of points. Then what we do is basically um, select the longitude and the latitude, uh, and with this function get data, uh, we can uh, like uh, download the the bioclimate data. Okay, so we do uh, get data, what climate, and then download through, and we want to be a bio, and then some resolution. Okay, you find this, uh, it's usually a convention, this as well. So then you can plot it. And what's happened is that you have, uh, as you can see, they show 16, but they are 19 bio uh, climate situations that you can see. And uh, then you can use the extract function from uh, this more. And this one here uh, with the climate and the frogs. So basically what does is extract uh, the location where are the frogs, uh, the climate location where are, where are the frogs. And here is an, an extract of the, the result. You have some, some like numbers. And um, so you, you then apply uh, this algorithm to, to make a model, okay? There, there is this function, BioClean. This function is a model, it's already made like GLM, like, I don't know, it's like a GLM uh, method Poisson uh, um, with, with some um, Averages, so it's a function, a model function already made. If if we want to have a look at um, at, um, at the function, and uh, uh, say you can find all the the information. No? Um, let's say if, if I do this. Hey Federico. Um, yeah, we are coming up on 730. Yeah. Um, and I think I believe that's the time that we said that the event would end. Is that correct? Y yeah, okay. So we basically uh, end the, the we, um, we finished with the, with the first case. So when you do this model, uh, and then you can use the pairs and see, uh, compare different bioclimate um, situation with the frogs and see where they are more probably located. And then finally, this is the end. You can use this uh, um, stack with all the bioclimate, they are 19, and then predict the values on the bioclimate and then plot it. So you can see that this is the United States, the location where, uh, where um, the frogs are. And the, the green um, 
location are the most suitable location, more, most pro, more uh, high, with the location with highest probability for locating the frogs. Okay, so now uh, I conclude uh, because uh, I go back to my presentation and uh, um, conclude. Um, uh, okay. We say that uh, um, uh, the, the second case was from with special uh, for health data. And you can have a look at that. Uh, there is a nice vignette from a special EPI package that tells you nice things. The most interesting things is that as a function, which is um, able to calculate the uh, expected values, usually calculated this way. This is the Y and these are the expected values. So now we don't have much time to do that, but basically what's happened uh, is if, if we have this uh, Scotland uh, lip cancer data, uh, we have the cases and the expected already calculated. No? Uh, we want to see, for example, what this, um, uh, if this type of cancer is connected with uh, um, AFF, uh, which, which is agriculture uh, things. So basically, if you work in agriculture, uh, if you have more uh, chance to have a lip cancer than if not, uh, basically, you know? So it, you, we can make a visualization just as the same as we did before. Basically, this is slightly different because you now use GeoMap and to use GeoMap, you need to specify the map ID, this is my takes uh, some time to, to explain that, but basically if we compare the two, so we have compared the cases with the expected already provided in the data set, you can see that there are some differences. So the expected are quite lower than what is are the observed values. Okay, let's just conclude and say that uh, there are different uh, model types that are usually used in spatial modeling. You can use a linear regression, a multivariate logistic regression, discriminant analysis, support vector machine, decision tree. So, but um, more, most importantly is that you make adjustment. So base spatial model are adjusted to data type models. So basically you have tools you can make like uh, aggressive regression, Poisson, Markov, use the, 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 the Monte Carlo uh, Markov chain. You can make spatial, you can use spatial cross-validation resampling or, or, or Bayesian model like the INLA, which uses integrated and nested Laplace approximations. So basically, uh, variation, validation then, uh, so the things that when you compare the observed value with your prediction, and so you validate with new data, uh, it's, a, it's a very important step. So a model can be validated by testing its prediction uh, in another data set of study uh, area that is different from the data set of study area where the model was trained. So you uh, allow for spatial correlation, especially the risk factors. So you know that you are using a model in a different environment. So you need to consider that. And um, to conclude, I look forward to see you for the next 30 day map challenge, which we start on the 1st of October. I uh, hope that this tutorial has been like a bit of uh, useful somehow. And um, uh, um, I finished. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Federica. That was a lot. I really learned a lot there. Um, um, can people reach out to you um, elsewhere, like maybe on Twitter or something, if they have questions? Okay, so Federica just put her Twitter handle in the chat. So if you want to connect with her there, uh, go ahead and do that. And then also I'll, I'll paste the, um, the GitHub link 
one more time. Actually, I'll put it on the meetup page um, just so that um, we all have that. But um, yeah, that's it, everybody. Have a, a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye.